Hi everyone, it's Peter. Sarah is behind the camera today. Say hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Behind me is our 3ESS, which you've probably seen in Connections Museum videos before. In the center of the machine, just below the tape drives, is the system status panel. This gives you an at-a-glance view of the overall health of the machine. The system normal lamp lights up if everything is okay. On the upper left of this panel are buttons that allow you to hard reboot the machine in an emergency. There are several levels of reboot, which Western Electric likes to call initializations. And they start with the lowest impact type and get progressively more drastic if the problem is not solved. Normally, initializations are carried out under software control, but a human might need to use these buttons if the machine is totally locked up. The 3ESS was designed to be turned on approximately once in its lifetime. But it's old and we don't like to leave it running 24 by 7 anymore. So we actually do use these buttons every time we turn it on. When it wakes up from a complete power off state, we tell the processor that it needs to do a full reload from tape. So we press enable to allow access to the keys, then stable calls, then memory reload, and finally init execute, which actually triggers the boot sequence. Actually, it now boots from a tape emulator, which we made, and that could be another video if you all want to know more about it. The whole machine is pretty interesting, too, and deserves a full video if enough of you in the comments below say that you want to see one. This part of the machine here is called the 3A Central Control, which, as you might expect from the name, is the main CPU. It has a bunch of buttons and toggle switches and blinking lights, too. There's a power button, an active, not active lamp, a button to switch the processor into manual mode, an error lamp, a reset button, a test mode lamp, and finally, a lamp test button. And here, we have the trunk and line test panel. With it, craftspeople can call up a particular trunk or line circuit for testing. After the circuit is connected, they can use this meter to diagnose electrical faults in the trunk or line circuit, or test audio signal levels with this meter up here. A craftsperson might use this panel if there was a suspected fault somewhere outside the central office, such as a short or a false ground, or maybe someone did not call before they dug and cut a cable with the backhoe. You might wonder what happens if someone accidentally presses a button while the machine is running. Well, the answer is usually nothing. Any of the buttons that can stop processing of calls, such as the power button, are not active unless you also unlock them by pressing a specific other button first. But if you do press the power button on one of the CPUs, the software will notice and complain about it on this teletype. Some of these buttons are plain white, and some of them are supposed to light up red or green. But the green ones are not very green anymore because the little color filter inside the button has cracked and fallen apart. You can see the shards of green stuff in there if you look closely. I'm not sure why it's only the green buttons that have failed. The red and yellow ones are all still fine. Is this the worst problem that we have with our 3E? Absolutely not. But it's still annoying to us, and I decided to see if I could fix it. The lamps behind the buttons are GE Type 388 24-volt miniature lamps, which only come in clear. So my first thought was to try to make green versions of those. But everything I tried led to an unhappy result. I watched all of the Technology Connections Holiday Lights video, but I did not have any more luck making good colored mini bulbs than he did. Either the lamp color was not green enough, like this one, or it made the lamp much too dim, like this one, or my coating just flaked right off. So I decided that wasn't going to work. I also tried using an LED version of the 388, which you can buy at an outrageous price, but those are actually much too bright, and their cool white color makes the button look blue instead of green, even after a green filter is over it. So for my next idea, I tried to very carefully dremel away the glue which holds the back with the post onto the button cap. I was kind of nervous about this because we don't have many spares and I didn't want to risk breaking the cap. And success! I got it apart. There's the little broken green lens that used to be attached to the top of that bit there. Now I just need to find some new green stuff to put inside the button. I got myself a Roscoe Lux swatch book, which has all sorts of different options for green filters to try to find the one that was going to look best. What I settled on, though, is a sheet of this stuff, which is also a type of theater lighting color gel, but it's somewhat thicker than the Roscoe Lux variety. I cut out little rectangles, 
and I installed them on the inside of the button, which is a little easier said than done. Et voila! Let's see how it looks on my bench after I put the top back on. Okay, power supply on, button cap goes over the lamp, and yeah, I am totally happy with that. Okay, let's take it back over to the 3E and see how it looks in place. And here we are in front of the 3ESS again. The red buttons are still red, but now the green buttons are green too. This was a bit less technical than the kind of tricky restorations that Sarah usually tells you about, but I hope you still enjoyed it. I also want to thank all of you who visited the museum in 2025 for coming by, and I especially want to thank all of you who donated either money or artifacts or tools or other useful stuff this year. And for those of you who have not visited yet, we would really love to see you here in 2026. Happy holidays and a very happy new year, everyone.